All right, today we're going to talk about seizures, epilepsy, and status epilepticus. Seizures are when you have an abnormality in the brain causing uh, the electrical signals to be sent incorrectly and it causes uh, problems with the muscles, it causes loss of consciousness, it can cause uh, dysphagia, biting one's tongue. What it does is it causes an abnormal signal and then the body responds incorrectly. So what, what are some risk factors for seizures? Genetics is a, is a risk factor. Uh, fevers, especially in very young children, uh, can cause seizures. Increased intracranial pressure, such as after a head injury, uh, brain term, uh, tumors, hydrocephalus, meningitis, uh, basically problems with pressures in the head. Uh, low glucose levels, so hypoglycemia, if you get too much insulin, your patient may, uh, before they go unconscious, maybe they'll start having seizures. Uh, changes in sodium levels in the, bo in the body. Uh, sodium has, helps a lot with fluid levels and if you didn't know the, the brain and the blood are separate uh, and when you have changes in sodium in the blood it will cause changes in how much fluid is in the brain and it can cause the, the fluid to either be too much or not enough and lead to seizures. So sodium is very important uh, with the brain. Low oxygen levels, uh, if a patient is having breathing issues or hypoxia for some other reason, it could cause a seizure. And withdrawals, and this could be from uh, alcohol, it could be from drugs, or it could be a patient who has uh, epilepsy and they take anti-seizure medicines and maybe they stop taking them. Um, that can cause withdrawal symptoms and it can cause seizures. So there are three types of seizures we'll discuss. There are generalized partial or focal, and just think of it partial, focal is kind of the same word, and then there's unclassified and idiopathic. So generalized seizures, think of this as the general body, the whole body is affected. Uh, another word, word for this is grand mal, and no that's not grandma seizures, that's why I first thought. And then you got tonic clonic seizures. So let's break this down, with a generalized seizure that affects the whole body, you could have an aura. And what an aura is, is it's a warning sign that the patient feels. It could be they smell a weird smell or they have a weird feeling in their body. And this is typical of epilepsy. Perhaps they uh, are aware of what their auras are. And so they can prepare themselves for their seizures if they're well, they shouldn't be driving, but if they're riding a bicycle or they're doing something where they need to stop and get themselves on the ground before they have a seizure, auras can be helpful. So tonic clonic so you can have a tonic seizure you can have a clonic seizure and you can have a tonic clonic seizure and these are all types of generalized so uh, the tonic phase is seen by tonic tone the muscle tone increases and so the body becomes rigid and this causes uh, also a loss of consciousness the clonic phase is rhythmic jerking this is where the patient may uh, have incontinence or they may bite themselves and because their muscles are contracting rhythmically. And then you have, may have tonic-clonic. So a patient may have just one or the other or they may have a tonic phase, then lose consciousness, and then when they regain consciousness they'll be in the clonic phase. Also, after seizures there's typically a post-ictal phase for a generalized seizure and what that would be is this is the phase where they, they are done having the physical movements of the seizure, but now they're exhausted from all the muscles contracting and they're very sleepy because their brain's been affected. So, to break this down one more time, you can have a tonic generalized seizure, which is just muscle stiffness. You can have a clonic generalized seizure, which is just rhythmic jerking. Or you can have a tonic clonic generalized seizure, in which you have muscle stiffness, then loss of consciousness, then rhythmic jerking. Another type of generalized uh, seizure is the absent seizure and this is where you hear about the seizures where someone is, they'll be talking to you one second and then they'll just go blank and their uh, their eyes are open and they're breathing uh, but they are somewhere else and they're having a seizure and they they're not conscious and this may be associated with automatisms which is where they may be their eyes are open they're blank they don't know what's going on around them they're not going to remember what happened around them, but they may be fidgeting uh, with their clothes or, the, or maybe smacking their lips. But uh, the other type of generalized seizure, so we have 
affecting the muscles, we have affecting the whole body in that they're unconscious and just staring at you, and the other whole body one is an atonic seizure, and this is they lose all muscle control, and this typically results in them falling and then losing consciousness. So that's generalized, it affects the whole body. A partial or focal means it affects only a, a limited part of the body, and so there are simple and complex. So you may have um, just in general a partial or a focal seizure would be uh, you'll just have ton tonicity and rhythmic jerking in, in one extremity or in one side of the body. Um, but to separate the simple and complex, in the simple um, you just have part of your body is affected, but in complex you also lose consciousness. And then the third category, unclassified or idiopathic, means it didn't fit the other categories and it's just any other type of seizure. And that's the majority of seizures that you'll see. So diagnosis for seizures. Uh, you can do an EEG and what this is is they'll uh, put the electrodes on the head and then they'll look at electrical, uh, ele electrical activity in the brain. And they can do an MRI and a CT as well to see if there's a cause for the abnormalities. So if someone's having a seizure, uh, what do you do during the seizure? You want to first and foremost protect their airway, make sure that they uh, are turned on their side so if they vomit or have any drool that it's not just getting stuck in their lungs and so you want to turn them to their side and also make sure that it's open. The second thing is you want to protect the patient. If the patient is sitting in a chair or they're up somewhere you want to get them as low as possible. You want to protect their head, uh, maybe set their head on your lap. Uh, when you're doing this though you don't want to restrain them. If their arms are flailing, uh, protect yourself obviously but you don't want to try holding it down because uh, they can't control their muscles and if they're someone, an old lady with osteoporosis, they're strong enough they can break their own bones. You also, to protect their airway, you can suction them, but don't put anything in their mouth to suction it out. Uh, maybe just those secretions that are around the mouth, because if they have uh, biting uh, as one of their parts of their seizure, they could bite whatever you're using the suction and they could break their teeth off and then aspirate their teeth into their lungs. So, that's what you do during the seizure, and then after the seizure, uh, typically the doctor should know by then and you'll be giving them anti-seizure medications. Okay, so anti-epileptics, these are anti-seizure medications. Uh, the big one to point out here is phenytoin, also known as dilantin. Uh, so what you want to do, these patients will take these chronically, uh, especially uh, with epilepsy, they'll take these chronically for life several times a day and they got to get labs drawn because there's uh, if there's too much in their body, then it could damage their, uh, or their organs. If there's not enough, then it won't prevent the seizures. So they have to do uh, weekly to monthly labs on the medicines. They have to take at the same time every day. So uh, it could be three times a day at the same time, always at 9 and 3 and before bed every day. And also uh, with the phenytoin, you want to be sure a big thing you'll see maybe on the test is avoid taking this with anticoagulants that are oral such as warfarin and also oral contraceptives because it'll mess both those up. Uh, with the warfarin it'll make you have bleed too much and with the anti uh, um, with the oral contraceptives it's gonna uh, it's not they're not gonna work and you're gonna get pregnant. Now the last thing to say about the seizures and epilepsy is the status epilepticus is the severe case it's a seizure after seizure after seizure and we're not gonna really talk about it much in this video but this is Typically when you'd call like a code rapid, um, and this is like a rapid situation, and ICU nurses come in, and the doctors, and this is an emergent situation. So this is seizures and epilepsy.